Hello, and welcome to the Talos Principle. Here we go, it's time for a new LP, and this is a game, much like most of the games I play, that I've been wanting to play for a very, very long time. This is a very old game at this point, it doesn't feel like it. I could have sworn this game came out like just, just a couple of years ago, but no, it's like seven years at this point, I think. Something around there. But I haven't seen much about this game, I tend to try and avoid everything I can. So I don't really know what it's about or anything like that, but I keep hearing people mention it, keep hearing people praise it, and it's it's always like talked about among the other really good puzzle platformer games that I love as well, like Portal and The Witness and Antichamber, and there's probably others I'm forgetting. Those the the big ones. This apparently sits up there with them as well. Everyone recommends it that likes those games as well. So that is very promising. Now this is not the sort of vibe that I was expecting from this game. I don't know what I was expecting. As I said, I, I've been trying to avoid finding anything out about this game. But yeah, it seems to have like a bit of a mythological, religious theme to it. I mean, I, I suppose that should be apparent from the name. But yeah, enough said. Let's get into the game. And normally, this is where I click on the options thing and go through the options for like 15 minutes and no one cares because it's the first episode of a Let's Play and everyone clicks off the video. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna change up the way I do this and instead we're gonna just jump in, play the game, and then at the end I'll go in here and show it off a little bit because I find options very uh, interesting and I'll just say real quick, this is an insane options menu. There is so much you can change. It's ridiculous. So very good options. I'll, I might need to tweak stuff if there's like performance drops and stuff, but if there are, there's a lot of flexibility here. So that's very, very promising to see. So let's just jump in and let's see what this game is actually about. Yes, I do want to restart. I just tested out the recording. I think I also skipped this intro, so this I haven't seen. Initializing firmware. Firmware functional. Loading child program parameters. That's a number. Loaded. System check. Passed. Starting child process. Ready. I don't think I really need to read this out, but okay, it wasn't too long. It's me! I'm the robot. And there you go. That's the intro. Oh yeah, holy crap, this game looks fantastic, Before and yeah. Child, you are risen from the one second? That's not the right one. Um, I don't think. Game options. Default, that's the one. I, I guess I played around with this a little bit. Subtitles are on as well. Hey, yeah, I want the, the default one. Dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice, and know that I am your maker, and I am called. Hello, hello. Seek me in my temple if you are worthy. Yep. Already. Some religious stuff. I mean, not really religious. It's actual... Actual gods speaking to us right now. And there's like a ton of these statues around. Very sort of... Uh, I don't know if this is like... Is this Greek? Uh, what is it called? Architecture? Or is it... Yeah, I guess it's Greek. Maybe Roman... Something like that, Italian or Greek. It's very interesting anyway. Oh yeah, okay. And yet, as far as I can tell, the game runs really, really well. And it looks very good. I did tone down a few settings, but like, you can't really even tell. I'm kind of surprised. The initializing child program logic check. And this is a wall we can't pass. So, I, I did test this like the first minute. I just made sure it could record. We have a jammer that we can take. Subject, object, interaction, okay. We are able to pick stuff up. Can I like jump up here? Can I jump up on this? No, it like pushes you off, all right. So a jammer locks onto things and we can click the button and it jams it and stops it from working. Complex task management, okay. So, then, of course, first thing I have to test, what if we place it, like, really close, and then take it through? Oh, 
Oh, you, like, automatically walk back. Okay, so you can't do that. You can't cheese it. Never mind. Worth a shot. And this is like a an emancipation grill from Portal, I suppose. You can't take things through. Basic calibration successful. And it's probably also a checkpoint. And we have enemies? Oh, enemies. I mean, let's see what happens. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And we just rewind. Correcting for errors. Done. And I think you could do that as well. Like, restart checkpoint. Yeah, you can hold X for reset. So if I do something bad, I can hold X. And then you rewind to the latest checkpoint. Okay. Interesting. Though it's pretty slow compared to just clicking restart here. So we have a jammer again. And I can jam even enemies. Aha. Predictive capacity okay. <laughs> I had to try it. Okay, you can't really do that. I'm assuming I'll get another jammer over there. But yeah, this is like... This spot is the furthest I got to. So this is all new from now on. Alright, doesn't like blow up. When you touch it, yep, more jammers. So we can cheese this. If I jam here, then I can take this one and take it over here. And then we can bring another jammer over here. I wonder if that will be useful. Yeah, I'm, I'm already noticing some very slight frame drops. I might like tweak some settings later on, but we'll test the first episode here. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 don't do that. Where's it gonna put me back? All the way back, okay, all right. That was kind of weird, I guess. I guess maybe you do need to do that. We need to grab this one eventually, and that's why there was a ladder there, so that you can get back. I suppose. No. Oh, I don't know where I am, but there is something beautiful about this place. I will explore and see what I can discover. Is this an actual QR code? Let me check one moment. It sure is. It's not like a site, it's just... It's the sentence. That is actually what this QR code contains. That's kind of a neat way to do it. So I guess you could check these out yourself just to confirm. Maybe they're gonna do one where like at some point the QR code actually takes you somewhere different than what the quote says. Who knows? But yeah, alright. I guess I'll do what I was doing because I figured that's a good idea. Also, I'm, I'm curious. What does this actually do? Okay, it doesn't instantly kill you, it just starts shooting you. Can you not do that? I feel like you can probably do that. There is a lot of flexibility in the options as I mentioned, and one thing- Oh, journal empty, no text found. One thing you can do is turn up the player's speed, which only affects your sprint speed, but now we're like- Did I even change it? Yeah, I guess so. Oh no, right, it's the opposite. Right, right, right. Sprinting is the same regardless, but now my walking speed is very fast. If I then go down to... Whoops, not first person. There is a third person mode, by the way, which is kind of cool as well if you prefer doing that. Let's do over uh, right shoulder, I think is what I prefer normally. And then if we do slow here, now we're, we're third person. Pretty cool if you want to do that. But now the sprint speed is the exact same, but now walking is much, much slower. I wonder what the uh, third person animation looks like. Now I'm just doing option stuff anyway. I mean, at least I'm not going through every little detail of it, so hopefully this is something at least. If I do fast here, oh. Fast here, and the animation, is it still? No, now you're jogging. Kind of cool. Let's go back to normal. Oh, wrong one. I'll probably play in first person, I just want to check this. Yeah, still jogging. Okay. And there's no, like, keybind or anything for uh, third person mode, is there? Third person view, H. Sweet, okay, so you can do that at will. And even, like, toggle between the uh, different types of third person. 
Yeah, that's cool. Maybe I should have checked some of the keys here. Toggle sprint. Yeah, I guess there's not really anything I could maybe put something on my uh, mouse four button, but we'll see if I need to do that eventually. But yeah, okay, let's now actually do the thing I was saying I was going to do. So lock this guy here. Take this with me. Lock this guy. And now we can, like, go all the way over here, lock this guy again, and just, like, ferry these two jammers along. So, if I stop jamming, he does he does shoot me from there, yeah. But that seems to be, like, the range of him, the max range. Yeah, that's the max range. Okay, but I'll uh, leave it jammed for now. So, yeah, this just takes me back for some reason. We can't open that. All across this land, I now we get the subtitles. Trials for you to overcome. And within each, I have hidden a sigil. Oh. It is your purpose to seek these sigils. Oh, for achievements. You will serve the generations to come and attain eternal life. I'm a robot. Do I not have eternal life? Logic check. Okay. Pass the initial checks. Yep. Tutorial complete. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hold on. This is important stuff. Can you, like, crouch? Wait, you can't crouch? There is no crouching? Crouch. No crouching. Robots can't crouch. All right. So you can't, like, do a crouch jump or anything. Ooh, I kind of, like, slid off it. You probably can't do this. Okay, yeah, it pushes you off. All right, well, good to know. And now I have a jammer with me. An illegal jammer. I don't feel like I'm supposed to have this. don't know if this is a game that would have, like, secrets and stuff like that. Where you want to, like, look around the back of objects and nooks and crannies and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to drop a couple settings a little more, I think. Oh, here we go. These are kind of easy to miss. I find myself in a world of impossible architecture and in inexplicable machines. I cannot fathom how it works, and I am terrified to put one foot in front of the other, lest I fall through the floor. Okay. Is that, like, my predecessor? So, like, I am actually a person that's been, like, put into this robot body? And that's why I'm trying to attain immortality? Or maybe not even trying, but, like, I'm here now, and... That's my, my goal, says this random god. Tetris piece. Oh boy. Other Tetris piece. Reverse L. Huh. What's this about? Tons of Tetris pieces. And? Use? We have Tetris pieces? This lock requires more sigils. Ah. I see. So to unlock this one, in here we would get a line piece and an L piece, but to get in here we need to find two reverse Ls and a Z piece. Which we would get here. So this is like, obviously, go here first, this is the, the proper way to go. But we could go over here to get a reverse L, and then here for a T, if I want to, like, be rebellious. Peephole. Okay, I need to test this. Is this gonna, like, destroy the jammer? Like an Emancipation Grill in Portal. No. Okay, it doesn't destroy it, it just blocks it. We can't bring these through. But interesting, so that it's like a, a bit of an open world sort of thing. But I guess for now we should do what we're told and check this one out, even though I don't want to. Ah, so it's like partitioned. We get a Z and two reverse L's, 
and in this area, but in this area we also have three separate partitions that then take us to one Tetris piece. Let's try and look around in case I miss any text. Yeah, I'm liking the uh, atmosphere so far a lot. A switch out of reach. Okay. And yeah, I've noticed that like every single statue you can find is headless. There's probably some sort of symbolical meaning to that. Like related to what's going on. He doesn't have that much range, but I'm gonna see what happens. Oh! Okay, it's like warning me. Alright. Well, that's good. It doesn't like instantly shoot you. The guardians of this land may no. harm you, but do not resent them. For they are my servants, and they challenge you only so that your faith might be strengthened. Yeah, this is interesting, so it's like everything is robotic and clearly like programmed and stuff, but not according to the god. These are servants and I'm proving my faith for eternal life. Huh. No text in here? Not that I can see. It's a weird, weird place. I would think there would be something hidden away here, but I guess not. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of checking corners, I think. Because I imagine this is a game that would have, like, little text boxes on, uh, on walls and stuff. And, like, hidden things in corners, but who knows. So yeah, jam that. There's the legendary Tetris piece. Just out of reach. Oh no. Switch out of reach. Now it's not out of reach. And that just opens that? No? That just turned off the uh, this guy, so now I can take off the jammer, yeah, and then jam the bomb instead, okay? Simple stuff. Yeah, and here's where I came from. And Tetris piece is ours. Amazing. And it says, like, to exit, I need those Tetris the pieces. You are collecting are not mere toys. Oh, I'm sorry. They are the sigils of our name. Each brings you closer to eternity. It's kind of hard to tell if this is, like, tongue-in-cheek or not. Is it supposed to be, like, kind of ridiculous? With robots and machine guns and bombs and Tetris pieces? But, oh, it's all religious stuff. Trust me. Or... Maybe it's actually serious. We'll have to see where it goes. But in that case, now we're done one. Let's uh, go and do another one. But I guess, really, I should go look at the options menu now. I think that might actually be the better thing to do. So it's a bit of a short one. But as I said, I want to end it off here. And then I'm going to take a look through the options and just show off some of the amazing like complexity that it has. And I'll probably fiddle around with uh, some settings, because uh, I was noticing a couple of small stutters here and there. So, seems to run really well overall, especially on a, a system that's as old as mine. And there's just so much flexibility that you can do. And yeah, I'm very interested in seeing where this is going to go. So, join me next time for more Talos Principle. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. All right, now the plebs are all gone. Let's dive into the options for all the real gamers. So we have a massive, massive options menu here. We have motion sickness options where you can do mouse sensitivity, field of view, turn on or off view bobbing, which is nice. I have it on so far. We'll see if maybe, maybe I do prefer having it off. It's not even that, that much. Is it even view bobbing? I can hardly even tell that it's view bobbing. Let's test this out. Oh, I keep doing that. Oh, yeah, dropping some frames again. I mean, I can't really tell. I'm thinking maybe I would want to keep that off just for the sake of video, so it's like more steady, but I don't know. 
And then we can go into performance. I guess I'll uh, wait with that because we get to that here. Then we saw this before. You have tons of settings for uh, the mouse and raw input and smoothing and stuff. Free look. So like if you turn this off, free look, then suddenly I can't move my mouse up or down anymore. Because I, I guess you never need to do that. Everything is just on the horizontal plane, sort of like Doom, where I can just, oh yeah, it says we have the Tetris piece. I could have jammed this guy just by like placing it here. As long as it's within the same horizontal plane, the vertical plane doesn't actually matter. It'll like auto target for things like that. So you could do that if you want. You could even like use the, uh, I guess, other keys and stuff if you want to do that instead, instead of using a mouse to click things and look around. But I like being able to click around or uh, look around freely. So I'm going to do that. And then, yeah, we have completely rebindable controls, not like two different uh, key bindings, or do we? I mean, we have D or arrow left, but I don't know if you can like, yeah, I guess you can map primary and secondary. That's kind of interesting. All right, secondary fire has no binding. Let's put that on like middle mouse. I don't think anything is on middle mouse, but maybe that's just a, a kind of an engine thing. It's just there. It doesn't actually, it's not used. Alternative views is right click. We have third person view, toggle sprint, reset, journal. Fast forward. Interesting. I should put that on something like um, T? Nothing is, yeah, T, why not? Nothing is using that. Toby reset default head pose. Oh, what? What is that? Yeah, press it, nothing. What if we're in uh, third person? No? All right, I, I don't know what that is. Hmm. Strange. Uh, so that was everything here. Well, that's the console. Yeah, that's a thing as well. Game options. We have subtitles, a crosshair. I could turn this off, but we'll see. Show hints. This was just on all, so I'm just going to have all on. But I don't know. I feel like maybe I should play with none or just some only use. But we'll leave it on all the hints. Uh, terminal font size. This is kind of nice. You can like change the font. I don't know like what a terminal is though. Is it just like... Is this a terminal? No. Take jammer. Honestly, I might not even have time to look through the options today. Holy crap, but I guess I'll do it anyway. So normal. No, that's not it. So I guess there will be terminals that we read later on, but that's good to keep in mind that if I have a hard time reading it, because my, my vision is pretty bad, I can increase the size. Yeah, view bobbing again, player speed. There's different, uh, like, narrators that you can have, the, the god voice. This is from, like, a Serious Sam DLC pack I have, and there's an American version, and then I don't know what author really is. But yeah, I'll leave it on default for now, but that, that could be kind of fun to check out later on. And you can even change the player model if you want to play as Serious Sam, I guess. Oh, it's not actually Serious Sam, but it's like a Serious Sam version of the, uh, what was it called? Toby? The model? Doesn't say. No, it just says default. I don't know what my name is. But yeah, that was just the controls. Then graphics, we have tons of options here with like multi-sampling, anti-aliasing and render modes and stuff. This was set to like really, really high. We have tons of settings here and field of view, but then this isn't even everything because then we go into performance and you can customize everything related to CPU and GPU and memory and level caching and max FPS. And there's so much to do here. This is probably what I'm going to toy around with a little bit, see if I can get a slightly better FPS. And here again, I've, I've turned down a bunch of stuff here because it was, uh, it was running a little bit meh with just like everything on ultra, turned off all the motion blur and Gaussian blur and stuff like that. But you can see there's just so, so, so much that you can tweak and change and it's ridiculous. GPU memory, we have tons of stuff here. I don't know if I need to lower anything from that. This one you can't customize, but still it's, it's a lot. And then color options, you can, you can do this. I was considering doing like a tiny touch of like extra brightness and like saturation and contrast. You can like do just a little bit and then suddenly it's slightly more vibrant or whatever, but I'll leave it as a default, but you can do so many things here. You could like make it 
There's color schemes as well. You can just like change it to whatever you want. If you want to play in black and white for whatever reason, you can do that. It's just ridiculous how much there is in this options menu. I, I can't believe... I don't even understand why they put so much in, but I love it. It's really, really good. And then we have sound options with tons of sliders. I think this was all default, so I'll uh, leave it at this for now and check. There's like different sound APIs. I... Why would I not have this one? Oh. Because it breaks the sound completely. That's why. I can't hear anything now. Okay, now it works again. That was weird. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Why the 2.8? I mean, maybe that's for like Windows 10 or something. I'm still in Windows 8.1. And there's language. There's tons of voice language as well, which is really, really interesting. They, they got like voice actors for many, many languages. Like fucking Croatian? I've never seen that before. And, I mean, not that I haven't seen the language, but, like, in terms of, uh, having voice acting, like, dubbed in that language, it's very, very interesting. And text, of course. Text, there's even more things. And in performance, we already saw that. And then advanced options, there's, you can have different letterboxing and showing the HUD, showing the time. If you want to speedrun stuff, you can scale the HUD, which could be nice if I want to make that a little bigger. And then to show a, an FPS counter. But holy crap. This is an insane, insane options menu. I love it. I think it's very impressive, very good. This is like, it's almost too much. It's almost overwhelming how much there is. But I really think this is sort of a, a good standard. Like, this is what people should strive for in terms of options in video games. Because having this much flexibility is incredible for just tailoring the experience exactly the way you want it to be, which I think is always a good thing for players and just for gaming in general. Anyway, that's it for options. I'll leave it off there. Uh, I'll play around with some settings until next time just so I can hopefully get the FPS working a little better, but we'll see. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Again, thanks for sticking with the boring options talk that no one cares about except me. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!